Hello and welcome to today's video. Today continuing on with my Dye Mine Ink review series from August 2022. If you're not watching this in August 2022, go and look at my channel. I've done a bunch of uh, Dye Mine Ink reviews this month uh, and there's some really lovely inks that I've shown. So uh, yeah, head over. So today we're looking at this ink. This is a purple ink. It's Mon Botto's hat. I'm going to talk about this shot on a few different kinds of paper all that kind of usual stuff. You can see it's a lot of deep purple uh, with some like bluey kind of tones and uh, a nice little bit of gold sheen there, like sort of typical green gold sheen you see on uh, on purple ink. So let's have a look at it. So we're starting with it here on Tomo River paper. This is 68 GSM Tomo River paper, the good old stuff that we know and love. Have this in two pens, a Twisby Go Broad and a Twisby Go Extra Fine. You can see here uh, on the Tom River paper, lovely shading in that purple. The rich per dark purples, I think, are particularly beautiful. A little bit of sheen there. It's not picking up particularly well on the camera, but we saw it on the colouring card before. Let's talk about these five points. The first few being sort of the standard ones for this series. Um, so, it, dye mine inks are made in Liverpool in England, and they've been uh, a st the company's been around since 1864. Uh, and the third point here is that they are safe. Dye mine inks are safe for fountain pens across the board. They don't have like ridiculous properties, or uh, well, the standard inks, I should say, don't have ridiculous properties. They're not super concentrated and sheeny and things like that. Just nice, balanced, well-made ink. So I said this one was created in collaboration with the Facebook group Fountain Pens UK. Apparently the color is inspired by a top hat. That's all I, I'm not a member of the group or anything, but that's what I've seen. Uh, and uh, the last point here is that it is one of Diamond's most popular purples, and particularly in the last couple of years since it's been out, this ink has become very, very popular. So let's talk about the performance. I said it's got a long dry time. So here after 20 seconds, it's still very wet. So these were both done with the broad, uh, and we can see that after two seconds, after 20 seconds, there's still actually a lot of drying to go. It is a highly saturated ink and has a nice flow. I put here, it is a decent performer. Uh, if we look at it on some lower end paper, which we will in a second, you'll see that there is a tendency to have a little bit more bleed than some other dye mine inks. Is that it cleans well, it's got nice blue tones and that it's excellent value. The extras are uh, it sheen, but not heaps in the writing. So you get it where the ink pulls, like uh, when you're doing swatches and things like that, and in some moments with the pen, particularly where it pulls, uh, but not generally in everyday writing. There is some shade. Once again, that depends on the pen. If you're writing with a wet pen, you are going to get less shading with this ink. Um, there's no shimmer and low water resistance. You can see here a lot of it was removed. This was done, uh, I draw, draw a triangle, then I hit it with, move it around with a water brush pen. You can see it moves around a lot. This is a very highly concentrated ink. Now, if we look at the performance, firstly here on the Tomo River, this is the standard, you know, this is good quality fountain pen friendly paper ink resistant, all that kind of stuff. You can see the ink performs lovely, beautifully on the surface. There's, um, you know, it, there's no feathering or spreading or anything like that. And uh, you get some nice shading. And on the reverse, you see nothing has come through. It's very nice, it's comfortable. This is a really, like it's a decently performed ink, particularly on higher end paper. If we look at it here on the lower end paper, this is the student notepad paper from um, Spyrex. You see that the color, of course, is a lot more muted and there is a little bit of feathering, but it's actually not too bad. It's kind of holding together okay. Uh, but if you look at the reverse of this, you can see a lot has bled through, more than the other dye mining that I've uh, got here on this same page. Um, it is a, it's, it's a, I wouldn't say it's an aggressive ink. It's not aggressive like um, some other brands, but it, it, do, it does sort of tend to bleed a little bit more on lower end paper. On the 80 GSM copy paper here, we see once again, a little bit of feathering, more muted sort of purpley color. Um, and then on the reverse, once again, just a little bit more bleed than the others. Uh, it's even in the finer, extra fine nib there, we do get a little bit of bleed, which uh, does surprise me from Dymax. Most of their rings do perform fairly well. This one's just a little bit more, yeah, a tiny bit more aggressive. Now on Rhodia, I find this really interesting. Firstly, I think the swab there looks really beautiful. It's got some lovely, that purpley tone is just absolutely stunning and a little bit of hits of that gold sheen are really beautiful. It holds together very, very nicely. And once again, actually, you actually get a couple of hits of sheen in the writing. What was interesting though, was the water test here. This is where I do like the, the little crosshatch line and I hit it with a water brush and I let it dry. Um, it really spread out. We get this interesting blue coming through. It's like this gray, dusty purple left behind. Uh, and But yeah, it sort of spread right out and uh, we lost a lot 
of the detail there. On the reverse of this page, um, you can see it performs well on Rodia, but you would expect that Rodia is considered fountain pen friendly paper. Um, but yeah, if you get it on lower end paper, this may not be, particularly in wetter pens, this may not be the ink for you. Looking here at the chromatography, okay, we get a nice dusty lighter purple left behind and the purple kind of gets darker as we move up through and then we get that hit of blue. And if we looked at the water resistance test here and also on the road here before, you see that the blue is actually very noticeable. And I think that's what we see when we see these swatches of the ink here. Um, there is a blue undertone, unlike some purples which have like that ready, un ready kind of undertone. I'm thinking of something like Lamy Dark Lilac, uh, which we'll see in just a second. Uh, this has a blue undertone for sure. While we're here, we might as well do the colour comparison. Here is that colouring card once again of Mombotto's hat. It is a lovely purple, it really is, and it looks great here on the swatch. As per usual, I have chosen a Robert Oster ink, and I went with deep purple because I wanted to show you something that was like that darker, darker purple end. Here we have more violet, or I don't want to say lilac, but violet sort of tones in the lighter shades than the uh, darker shades there of the uh, Robert Oster deep purple. And then we have Lamy Dark Lilac. Now you can see this has a redder tone to it. Uh, and it sheens a lot heavier, of course, as well. Like, Lamy Dark Lilac sheens like quite a lot. This for me is like my go-to dream purple. Um, but I think Mombotto's hat with that slightly violet undertone, that, you know, that, that blue through it, I think makes a very, very nice ink. Let's talk about the price now. Now I have priced both the 30 mil and the 80 mil bottles at Australian, US and the, uh, U the UK pound price. In Australia, this is like one of the lower end prices that I, standard prices I can find. For the 30 mil bottle, it's 8.95. And for the 80 mil bottle, it's 19.95. US is 7.50 for the 30 mil and 16.50 for the 80 mil. And then the pound price, which is from Colt Pens, which is where I buy the majority of my dye mine inks, you get the 30 mil bottle for two pounds 45 and the 80 mil bottle for six pounds 25. Tremendous value really. Okay, and now the score. I've given this three out of five. Now purples are one of my favorite color families for ink. I love it. I generally always have something inked up purple. Um, but there is a bit of bleed on lower end paper here. Now that, if you're just using Tomo River or Graffalo or Midori or Rhodia or any of those lovely higher end papers, this isn't gonna be a problem for you. But if you are having to write on lower end paper and if you use broad nibs, just be aware. There is also a slow dry time. So if you're working with, once again, Tomo River paper, you will notice that. But it is a great color and you get great value and it is safe for fountain pens and all those kinds of things. So I've given it three out of five. So. I hope you found this video about uh, Diamine Monboto's hat to be interesting and useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Hit the notifications button if you want to stay up to date with the videos that I produce. And please feel free to get in touch using any of the platforms listed below. If you've got products you think I should be looking at, or if there is a way you would like to support this channel by sponsoring a review or providing an item for review, I would love to hear from you. It's your support that makes this channel possible, and I thank you so much for it. In the meantime, and until my next Diamine review, enjoy your pens, enjoy writing, and I'll talk to you soon.